Welcome back to Two Gals in a Glass Half Full. We Today's random. Uh, Dr. Jess and I are going to be sharing, if you love random questions, random information, we're going to be sharing just our experiences. Uh, today is just a short little episode. But before we get started, Dr. Jess, what's in your glass? I am working on my cup of coffee. So it's a low acidic bean with some half and half. Uh, no sugar, anything else. I like, you know, simple. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, what's in your glass? So I have just plain water, but it is in my new crunchy tumbler, which I'm super excited about. Crunchy is like my favorite. Uh, it's a makeup and skincare line. I mostly use the skincare, um, but it's like one of my favorites. So if you don't know anything about crunchy, go check it out. Absolutely. And we'll link it in the episode description if you have interest. Uh, so Dr. Bobby and I, we meet on a pretty regular basis, whether it comes to what we're doing in our personal lives or what we're doing in the clinic and just kind of asking each other what, um, how we're doing or what some current growth options are that we've experienced or areas where we've struggled. And so we decided today just to record our meeting because <laughs> other people might find it interesting. And if you do, then awesome. And if you don't, just keep swiping. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, when it comes to dry needling, um, mm -hmm. currently, like right now, like what's your jam? Like, where are you crushing it with dry needling and getting really good results? So I would have to say one of my favorite places where I get the best results in dry needling is for headaches. Um, so kind of in that cervical spine up into the occiput of our head, um, we kind of do a little bit of manipulation, which is like cracking, a little bit of soft tissue, and then put a bunch of needles in there and with some e -stim, And that really helps. Um, I have so many patients that walk out of there feeling better. Maybe the headache's not completely gone, but it feels better. And by the end of the day, they have no headache. Um, I, it is a quick turnaround, which I love. They see the results right away. They feel better when they leave the table. So yeah. I have to say that's not the only, but probably my favorite right now. Uh, yeah. Dr. Jess, how about you? I'd say I'm getting, I mean, I love headaches, don't get me wrong, uh, but I've recently had a number of people with not necessarily like a true SI joint sprain, which is that joint right between like the hip and the low back. So it's kind of like below belt line, but off to, you know, not centered, just off to the side. But I've had a number of people that have had just some significant dysfunction through there. So the hip's not moving well, lumbar spine's not moving well, and we've got some abnormal biomechanics in that pelvis. And so really getting deep into some of those hip muscles that are like, I mean, they're just so many layers deep. I'm finding all sorts of yuck in those muscles mm -hmm. that I can treat really effectively with the needles just because of the depth of treatment that I can go. And I mean, the ability to use the hip quickly is like, I mean, it's astronomical. Like if there's a trigger point in there and you treat that same session, that leg is moving in the direction we want it to with the correct line of force, which it was completely like all over the place prior to needling. So some of those like big outcomes are really fun because then the patients feel empowered and they're like, oh my gosh, like I can do this, which is amazing. Yes, I, I there's so many great benefits to dry needling. Um, I know we've talked about it before. Yeah, absolutely. So. Now, if we're looking at favorite exercise. So one thing that Dr. Jess and I love is full body exercise because our time exercising is limited. Neither one of us have an hour or two a day every day to go exercise. So we need to be efficient um, as possible. So Dr. Jess, what is your favorite all body exercise? Getting all the muscles you can in one exercise. So like my go-to is just always going to be a squat to row. Uh, using TRX straps. It's just like my ultimate favorite because I'm getting closed chain exercise with the squat. And then as you pull up into that row, you're getting biceps, upper body, mid back, and it's going to challenge proprioception, which is just where's my body in space is going to challenge my muscle capacity because I can load that down and it's going to control like that mid back, which is like Nobody uses their mid back well, let's call it what it is, right? Um, and then there's all sorts of growth, right? I can go from a double leg squat to a single leg squat. I can go deeper as I get more comfortable and stronger in that squat. And so it just like lots of room for growth in that exercise. So it's like all time favorite. 
Like I've got 80 year olds that do it and I've got 20 year olds that do it. Different intensities, obviously. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But I mean, across the board, it's going to be like, it's like eating your microgreens. It's just good for you. (laughs) I love it. It is a great one. What's your favorite all body, whole body activity? So I think this one is hated by most. Um, But one of my favorite all body exercises is burpees because it is your entire body it gets cardio it gets strength and it doesn't take a lot i guarantee Mm -hmm. you most of us if you're not doing them daily you do 10 real fast you're going to be out of breath and tired um Mm -hmm. so i love a good burpee and again like dr jess was saying it can be modified you don't need to jump you can just stand up and go on your toes you can you know crawl down crawl up you know it doesn't need to be a hop but then you can make it more challenging. You could add a push up. Um, there's different variations. And one of my fa- favorites, so I did gymnastics. So our burpees were very clean down to push up position, clean push up, tuck in, stand up, and jump. One of my favorites, though, is a really sloppy get your chest to the ground. I don't care how you get to the ground, get all the way to the ground, lift up your arms and legs off the ground, and then get back up. Um, and kind of taking your arms off the ground and legs off the ground really makes it. We call it like a dead stop. Like all of those muscles have to stop working and then you got to push the ground to get back up. So a good burpee is one of my favorites. Oh, absolutely. Like I'm never going to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> they're hard though. They're, they're yeah. hard and can be not fun. And, and I hate myself while I'm doing them, but I always feel good afterwards. If you ever do a circuit with me, there's always burpees. Like, like, like people are like, why do I work out with you? This is the worst. I'm like, you're the best. Yes. <laughs> you know how much you're getting done all at once in 30 minutes? Like, it's going to blow your mind. And then obviously, like, everyone has fun. But, like, it's just like, really? Burpees every time? I'm like, yeah. It's the best way to warm it up into a workout, right? You get it all going. Um, so now switching gears a little bit, Dr. Bobby, because mm-hmm. we, you know, we love moving our bodies well, we love treating pain. Um, but then there's also the whole like mental health component of like keeping everything nice and healthy and strong. So when it comes to meditation, right? What, because we know that it's helpful. It's good for you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We all know that. Sure. Um, moving on. Um, <laughs> how do you actually implement that? So before I had my daughter, I always did it at night. I had a phone where I would play some sort of guided meditation and it would actually help me to go to sleep. Um, I typically would use an app for that and I really enjoyed it. Since I've had her and she sleeps with me, I don't do that anymore. So my mental uh, meditation, mental break more now is like closing my eyes and taking one or two really deep breaths and kind of just like, if I feel the frustration, I'm not really thinking about anything specific, but what I'm focusing on is breathing out and that like shakiness that I feel in my body, that anxiety I feel in my body, just breathing it out. Um, and I find now that's more what I do, especially if it's a late night and she's crying and I feel my stress levels and my patients kind of dwindling. Um, I find that really helps give me just 10 seconds to like breathe, plug my ears if I need to, if she's screaming, um, and calm myself down, uh, through nice deep breaths. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So how how about you, Dr. Jess, what does meditation look like for you these days? Uh, I keep my AirPods next to my bed. So I've got a set that I keep there and I, I just love guided meditation. I think, it's when I think about ending my day, I really like using that as like that final hoorah at the end of the day Mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm, I'm fully closing that chapter before I go into sleep. And one, it helps me sleep better, but then two, it also kind of gives me that space at the end of the day to not hold anything, you know, like, Mm -hmm. cause you have all these things at the, you know, and it's like a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. And like, (laughs) you don't, it don't carry it into the next day. Like it's, it, it, what's happened has happened and what's going forward is new. (laughs) So um, don't let this affect negatively, you know, what's, what's going on forward, you know? So I do think that for me, like just listening to that meditation at the end of the day, uh, I don't like, I mean, I could sit and read or, you know, things like that. I really find this to be 
more beneficial by the time i lie down i'm done right i'm so tired um so yes. i mean i'll read two pages and pass out and i don't even remember what i read and so um, that's just the phase of life i'm in right like it's i've got you know two small kids like running a couple of businesses <laughs> like I, I people tell me i should read more um and, <laughs> okay I, I i love that advice and i do and i appreciate it it's just right now like reading for fun isn't um, that I don't put in as a, a category that's more important than the meditation. And so, and my bandwidth is only so, so wide before I fall asleep. Uh, so like I put that meditation first and then maybe when I'm not as busy and I don't like, there's not so much at night that that needs to happen, but I've got a number of years left before that's going to happen. <laughs> Realistically, I hear it gets harder as I get even busier. So like, so I want to keep the meditation uh, and guided meditation is, is what I like. Um, so I listen to somebody called Jason Stevenson. He's on YouTube. It's free. And I just, I love his uh, different sleep meditations that he's got. So works for me. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. So everybody, if you have listened to anything that we talk about, you all know that Dr. Bobby and I both love gardening. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to switch gears. We're going to kind of push it into the garden. So, um, Dr. Bobby in the garden, what is your favorite thing to grow? I know we can grow all sorts of things, but think of like the one favorite. So the one, you know, okay. My favorite vegetable and my favorite thing to grow are two different things because I don't grow my favorite vegetable, which is a sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Um, I have tried potatoes before and they actually turn out well. Mm -hmm. Um, but with a sweet potato, I feel like there's so much I'm excited this week. I'm trying sweet potato tacos. Um, which will be good. But my favorite thing to grow is the cherry tomatoes. I just feel like here, um, those cherry tomatoes taste nothing. Like there's no comparison to the grocery store. Um, they are so good, so juicy, so flavorful. So if I had to pick like, and only grow one thing in my garden, it would be a cherry tomato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So super fun. Yes. I know. Dr. Jazz, I know you have a big garden. You just finished building your greenhouse. How exciting. So, so <laughs> what is, if you had to pick one and you could only grow one vegetable, what would it be? So, and not that I do it well, right? And I'm going <laughs> to put it as like variety of vegetables. <laughs> it's hard for me to pick one. I love growing squash. Like, I just think they are so fun. They come out in all these different colors and shapes. And it's like, they're, it's just like this, like little magic, like this little plant starts growing. All of a sudden you'll get this big old squash from it. And then you can use it for soup and stir fries and you can open it and bake it and stuff it. I mean, it's like endless. Like I love growing squash. Now in Florida, it's actually pretty hard to grow squash because <laughs> of like the humidity and like white powdery mildew. And it's like this, like, so it's one of my frustrating plants because it's not like it's needy, which isn't a little annoying sometimes. Cause I'm like, why are you so needy? But you're beautiful. Right. So, <laughs> but every year I'm like, I get better and better at like keeping the squash plants healthy and, um, getting more and more production out of them. Um, so it's just, it's just fun. One of the, one of the most fun. I like squash. I, we grow a ton of squash up here. So I, I love it. How about like when you were growing, what is, did you have any fruit or vegetable that like completely surprised you? Like you had no idea either what it was or how it would grow. Um, yes. and just surprised you. I'd say loofah. So, uh, so a friend of mine had given me some loofah seeds. And if any of you were out there listening or like me, I didn't realize that loofah, like a loofah sponge that you use in the shower is actually a plant. It does not come from the sea. I kind of thought it came from the sea. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, like a sponge comes from the sea. So you're like, yeah. oh, a loofah, like, it comes from the sea. It does not. It is a plant. So, so she brings me loofah seeds and I was like, great. And so I had no idea exactly how this would grow. She said it would go nuts in our environment here in Florida because it's warm and moist and humid and everything that this plant loves. So it took off. And I have big palaces. <laughs> like they're like six feet tall. You can walk underneath. It grew. I had three plants, two on one side, one on the other side. 
and it grew up and over and up and over and up and over and up and over and I just kept winding it and so you know I put them in the ground in March and by August it's ready to harvest because you have to like it turns into a big vegetable like a big uh zucchini but large zucchini and then you leave it on the vine until it really turns brown and all of that fibrous material it just kind of starts to I mean, break down and now you just have what's left, which is the fiber and then you peel it and that's your lupus sponge, right? Yeah, like you that's can so put awesome. it in the sun and, you know, clean it with like that or, you know, soak it if you want. Um, so, but it's just like crazy how well it grew. We had all these loofah like hanging down, like, um, <laughs> so, and now that's like our Christmas gifts every year. If uh, you're on our list, you get a loofah. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many of them i was gonna say hey and it's useful and it's awesome it and it's natural and it's toxin free and not made of plastic so i use it for cleaning it's like they're really great for cleaning and because uh, they're abrasive but they're not going to scratch anything so like in the shower like on the tile things like that um you know in the sinks when like toothpaste gets kind of stuck in on the sinks um i think our kids just like I think they brush and then they just spit out like pieces of toothpaste and then put more <laughs> toothpaste on and then do it again. And I think it just happens repetitively based on how the sink looks. So <laughs> like, I don't know what, I don't, I don't understand how the sink looks so messy. <laughs> but what oh, a sponge it comes right off. <laughs> kids, kids, kids. <laughs> they love brushing their teeth, right? Like, right. <laughs> yes. At least they're doing something good. Count your wins. Yes. <laughs> Um, all right. So now like, you know, tight. So, you know, we started with exercise, went through a bunch of stuff. Now let's bring it back to exercise, but let's think more of like, as we age and, uh, maybe we're not rock star 20 year olds, like lifting 500 pounds over our heads. <laughs> <laughs> we're like getting into those years where like arthritis is setting in, you know, maybe a little osteopenia, you know, tag on a couple of more comorbidities, uh, which are just common. Uh, so now let's think about into our golden years. What are some of like just the easy exercises that can be very helpful and give you a big like, boom, this is going to just like, honestly, like I always said, it's, it's like eating your microgreens. It's only going to help. <laughs> so I feel if you're in your golden years and you only want to do one exercise, I highly, highly recommend. I tell all my patients when you're sitting in a chair, stand up without your hands, sit back down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, do a sets of 10. Um, if you need to use your hands, use your hands to start. But eventually you wanna be able to do it without your hands. You can also progress it by not fully sitting. So you're standing up, you sit down, tap your bottom to the chair and stand back up. The reason I love this exercise, especially as we age, is because if you think about your grandparents, great grandparents, aunts, uncles that are older, most of them can walk from A to B in and out of the house. But where do they need your help? They don't need your help getting out of bed. They can typically walk and a lot of times they can do stairs. But how many of them sit on that soft couch at your house and can't get up? And you need to kind of help them get up. The sit to stand is such a great exercise. It strengthens more than stairs. It strengthens more than walking. It requires the most amount of force in your body from the activities we do every day. So I have to say that is one. And Dr. Jess, I'm going to add a second one in there because I also think as we get older, and I'm talking older 30s, 40s, 50s, not necessarily in our golden years, but we should do that then too, the 70s, 80s, is get on the floor. We stop getting on the floor. And there's a lot of good exercise in getting on the floor. And one of the biggest, hmm, I don't want to say issues, one of the most common injuries as we get older is falling. And a lot of times they can't get back up. And it's not always the fall that causes the issues. It's the, they laid on the floor for eight hours before someone found them. That causes a lot of issues. So really get on the floor and get back up. And I don't think we should ever stop doing that. Those two things. Never. No, like, I don't care if you're 90 years old, like, get onto the floor, you know, play with your dog, cat, grandkid, whatever. Uh, because once you stop doing it, that's when you stop being able to do it. Um, yeah. That's one of like the number one goals that we work on here in the clinic. I don't care who you are. Uh, you're leaving here and you're going to be able to transfer from floor to stand without holding on to something. Because heaven forbid you have a slip and fall and you're out in the grass, right? So like, what are you going to do? 
Like you can't like like ask somebody to bring you a chair. Someone's gonna start yanking on you to try and get you to stand up because like people don't mm-hmm. know how to assist a transfer properly. So it's yeah. like keeping that sense of independence is huge. Um, besides those two, Dr. Joss, do you have any other uh, exercises you love for uh, us to do as we age, as we mm-hmm. hit those higher end of the years? Yeah. So I really like working on balance. And so, and the routine that I give out a lot is not, uh, doesn't take a lot of time, literally it takes maybe five minutes, typically less once you get confident with it. Uh, Because what happens with our balance is that oftentimes as we get older, and I have patients that are active patients, right? They might be runners, they might, you know, um, you know, do other things. And when I really start to challenge them a little bit with a coordination that isn't their typical coordination, they're all over the place, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, how is that so hard? It's because we never really are challenging balance. And so when we talk about that, our ankle response, which is just when we are standing, how are our ankles actually trying to keep our center of mass within our base of support? There's like that little bit of wiggle that happens. You know, if you stand on one foot and the ankle starts to wiggle, so that's your ankle response. Outside of that, you're going to have a hip response. So if you think of a tightrope walker and you've got somebody on the tightrope and they're doing that wiggle from side to side to make sure they don't bust their face, right? So that's their hip response. And then the last response that needs to happen is called a stepping response. The tightrope walker doesn't have the option to use that. (laughs) But us on firm ground, we do. And so I like after you brush your teeth in the morning, because we all should be brushing our stinky teeth, okay? So after you brush your teeth in the morning, back into a corner in the bathroom, you're already there. It's You're associating this with something you're already doing. Back into the corner, but don't touch the walls. Put your feet close together and just challenge, can I look up towards the ceiling and down towards the floor 10 times and not sway, right? Because when we look up, we have a tendency to sway backwards. When we look down, we have a tendency to sway forwards. And that's just tendency that can be broken. There is no reason why when we look up or down that you should sway. And do the same thing side to side 10 times. When I turn my head to the right, I should not associate that with a weight shift. If you ever come around a, a door and you bump your shoulder into it and you're like, gosh, I didn't even realize I was right there. How did that happen? You were turning your head to look at where you were going. You associated with a weight shift and then you slammed your shoulder. Um, so like, it's a very easy thing that you can do. And then you challenge, if that's easy, you just challenge your base of support, go into a staggered stance. So heel the toe, go do it on one foot. I guarantee you, if you can do that on one foot, look up and down side to side, do it 10 times. And you do it a couple days a week, you will continue to have very good balance. And it's so easy. If you just kind of like make it a habit, um, then you'll never have that like, point in life where you're kind of like struggling to um, keep yourself upright and, you know, holding on to stuff around you. So oh, that's good. Favorite. I think balance. Yeah. Balance is something we forget about as we age. We just think because we're older, our balance gets worse. And that's not true. It should not be no, that way. No, no, We don't accept yeah. that age equals decreased ability. Absolutely yes. not. No, no. So, well, Dr. Jess, thank, uh, I've, Thank you. I love hearing your opinions on things and how, I don't know, we just love sharing information. We love asking each other questions kind of randomly. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So uh, maybe we'll do more of this. Yeah. Um, Awesome. And I enjoy learning from you, Dr. Bobby. And then if anybody else has like, hey, like I have questions that like I would love your opinion on or like, what do you think? I mean, we are not treating people, right? But like, what's your, what are your thoughts and opinions on X, Y, or Z? Um, then, you know, we'll do more Q and A's to, to answer questions. All right, everybody. Where, oh, sorry. Uh, Dr. Jess, where can they send those questions? Oh, good call. <laughs> It'll be in the episode description, <laughs> but just, you can shoot us an email. It's info at uh, two dash gals.com shoot us an email and um, that, that email is monitored. So, and you can also DM us on uh, Instagram as well, if you'd like. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to the episode today. If you would like to learn more about how two gals can support you, then join our two gals insiders membership, which can be found at www.2-gals.com 
Also, don't forget, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook as well as Instagram. Okay, everybody. Bye. Enjoy your week.